I'm Chef Frank, this is Proto Cooks, and today we're making pâte au choux two ways, profiteroles and gougères. <music> Chef Frank, what is pâte au choux? Uh, basically in French, pâté means paste, and choux means cabbage. So basically it's cabbage paste. Uh, it has neither paste nor cabbage in it, right? But when you make a cream puff, the French would say it looks like a little mini cabbage. It is a dough that we make in restaurants, bakeries, and patisseries all over the country and the world. It's super versatile, it's delicious, and most people know them as cream puffs or eclairs. But this dough goes well beyond that, right? You can do it savory, you can do it sweet, you can make churros out of it. People actually will boil these and make kind of like a gnocchi out of them. So this dough, if you learn it, and master it is one of those things that you should have in your culinary tool belt. Today we're gonna to focus on two preparations with this pâte au choux, one cold and one hot. The hot one's gonna be gougères, which is basically a cream puff that has cheese folded into the batter. It's served as an hors d'oeuvre or a canapé or a tapa. They're absolutely delicious, light, and uh, I'm gonna put cheese in them so they're super cheesy and delicious. The other one we're gonna do is a savory profiterole. A profiterole is normally a cream puff split open, scoop of ice cream is put in, and then topped with chocolate sauce. But we're gonna do a savory one with a little black pepper on top, and we're gonna stuff it with some cheese. For my pâte de choux, this is what you're gonna need. Eggs, flour, salt, butter, water, milk, and cheese. Before we make our pâte au choux, I wanna talk about the sponsor of today's video and the featured ingredient in today's recipe, Cambazola Black Label Cheese. Cambazola Black Label Cheese is a gray rind, triple cream blue. Now, when people think of triple creams, they normally think of France, and uh, that's where this is so different. This is made in Bavaria in Germany. Because it's a triple cream and it's a blue, it has that beautiful silkiness of the triple cream and then that nice kind of mild pungency of a blue cheese. It's made from 100% cow's milk from Bavarian cows. Happy German cows. The Capizola brand has been in the States for over 40 years uh, and Black Label has been in the States since 2013. It's won plenty of awards for being an outstanding triple cream blue cheese. Uh, and if you can't find it in your supermarket, I'm gonna put a link here so you can find where they sell it. It is 100% worth seeking out. Not only is Black Label silky, creamy, and delicious, it is versatile. And you're gonna see today, just like our pâte de choux, this cheese is super versatile. We're gonna serve it in our Gougères, fold it in, and we're gonna serve it inside of our savory profiteroles. You can serve it hot or cold. And if you put this on a cheese platter, it will be the star of the show. You may be thinking to yourself, hey, I've seen this cheese before on your channel, Chef Frank. And yes, you have. Way back in July, I did a compound butter video that I'm gonna link right here. And I put this in a compound butter and I put it on steak and it was delicious. If you haven't tried it yet, check out the video, make it and eat it. So I just wanna say thank you, Camazola Black Label, for sponsoring this video. Let's make the pâte au choux. The thing that I love about pâte au choux is it's not all that hard to master. It does take a little technique, but it's really not that difficult, and it comes together really quick. So all I really have to do is I'm gonna turn my flame on, I'm gonna put my water or my liquids in, make sure your flame is on. You can do all milk, uh, I wouldn't recommend doing all water just for the fact that it's not gonna taste all that great. You're gonna put your butter in. You just dump the butter in, you dump your milk in, and we're gonna let this come to a simmer, right? I don't want this to boil away, right? Because a lot of times people will leave this on the flames and then the liquid all boils away. That's not what you want. The liquid is actually what helps give us that nice puff. So let's bring this up to a simmer and then we can add the rest of the ingredients. So it's coming up to a simmer now. I'm gonna add my salt because salt is a flavor enhancer. I'm gonna lower it down so that it doesn't boil over. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my flour and dump it all in at once. Right, lower it down so it doesn't boil over and let's stir the flour in. Now it's gonna kind of be rough to start off with, but what we want to do is make sure that this dough comes together in kind of like a ball or a lump and pulls away from the side of the pan. It shouldn't be sticking. It should come together as kind of like a dough, right? So I'm just gonna keep on mixing, let the flour break up. A lot of people will say you have to sift the flour. I am not a flour sifter. I am horrible as a baker like that, but I'm just gonna kinda keep mixing until it pulls away from the sides. Just lower my heat just a little. You see how it's pulling away from the sides and coming kinda into like a, a big lump? 
That's what I want. I'm gonna cook just a little bit of the moisture off now. All right, so I'm gonna shut off the heat. I'm gonna get rid of my burner and we can add the eggs. I'm gonna crack my eggs while my dough kind of just cools down a little. I don't wanna add my eggs right away because the eggs tend to cook. Um, at the end of the day though, I do want this dough to be warm when I pipe it out. I don't want it to be ice cold. Um, it just makes it easier to pipe out. If it's cold, it's too stiff and it gets really hard to squeeze out of your piping bag. So let me give this one more mix. And you could do this process in a mixer. That's fine, just take this at this point, put it in a mixer. I'm gonna do it by hand. And what I like to do is this, just kind of spread it out, add one egg, break it up, and mix it in. It's gonna get a little sloppy to start, which is kind of fun, because it just sloshes around. But you wanna kind of get that egg in there and combine it all the way before we add the next egg. And if your dough is too hot, usually it scrambles the egg, but if you go quick, you'll be okay, right? So once that egg is incorporated, add one more. Add the egg, you wanna be careful not to get it everywhere. Uh, chances are you will, but just break it up. Um, when you're doing really big batches of this, your arm will wanna fall off. So I do suggest using a mixer, because it does get a little exhausting. See, so once it's incorporated, add another egg, and so on and so forth. All right, let's get a last egg in there, break it up, get it in. So once that egg's incorporated, Ooh, I'm getting tired, I'm getting shvetty, right? Once the eggs are incorporated, you have a really nice kind of silky dough, and that's what you want. This is where we're at with that dough. It's pipeable, it's still warm, right? And now at this point, we're gonna split it in half. Half I'm gonna put some cheese in, which I'll show you in a sec. The other half is ready to pipe onto our trays. Now for our savory profiteroles, I'm gonna take half the dough right now, and I have a pastry bag. I'm gonna fold it out over itself. So I have like a little kind of lip. Uh, normally what I would do with this is I take this, I put my hand in here, I get a scoop of the batter and I can kind of just push it in there. If you're not comfortable with that, you can always put it over a glass, put it over a glass and you can kind of just get it into your pastry bag. So now that I have that, I'm just gonna kind of squeeze it down. I will cut a hole in it in a minute. I'm gonna twist it and put it aside for piping later. So for the Gougere, I'm gonna take the black label that I've had out at room temperature and I'm gonna break it up, rind and all, the rind is delicious, into our mix. So try and break it up. If you wanna chop it, you could, but I'm just gonna kinda beat the heck out of this to get it nice and smooth. So now you can just stir this cheese in really well, break it up and just really make it a part of the batter. It smells delicious. So make sure we're scraping down the sides and you really want the cheese to become part of your mixture. The cheese should be kind of emulsified or mixed in really well. And I think that we're pretty good there. If you look at it and I think we're good to go on this, it's smooth and creamy. I'm gonna put this in a pastry bag and we can pipe it out. So just like we did with the plain pâte de choux, we're gonna take the Gougere mixture with the cheese in it and we're gonna put it into our bag. If it doesn't all fit, just put it aside and we can get the rest out later, but there you go. Let's give it a twist. And now it's time to pipe our Gougeres and our profiteroles. So I'm gonna pipe out the plain ones first. I have a scissor. Uh, you can use a pastry tip for this, but I just kind of like doing without one. It's just easy. Make sure you get a nice sharp scissor. And the best way to pipe is this. A lot of people try and squeeze. That is the wrong way to do it. When you pipe, the twisting is the most important thing. Every time you pipe it, you're gonna give it another twist. So I'll show you this. A lot of times what people will do with pâte de choux, when they're using a convection oven, they'll take a little bit of the pâte de choux, put it underneath so that the paper doesn't blow around. But my convection oven is not that strong. So this is what you do. You take this, I'm gonna squeeze straight up and down to get a cream puff and pull up. Now, instead of squeezing really hard, twist your bag. You see how much pressure that puts on the bag? This way I'm not struggling to force it out. Every time you pipe, you want to twist. I'm going straight up and down and forming my profiteroles. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go one side, the next side, keep twisting so my paper doesn't blow around. This is the way I keep it from doing that. And I'm gonna do some in the middle as well, all right? And we're done. So 
These little points, a lot of times, are a little unsightly. There's two different ways you can take care of that. The first way you can do this is get a little bit of water, put your finger in the water, and tap them down, right? This works. It's slightly inefficient. So the way that I learned is you can get a paper towel or a kitchen towel, make it damp, and you can just tap. If you just tap lightly, you'll see that the points all get pushed down, right? So a damp kitchen towel or a damp finger so you don't stick to the dough. If they're being stubborn, you can use your finger. These are gonna be my savory profiteroles, so I want a little garnish on top. And all I'm gonna do is take a little bit of black pepper because black pepper is gonna go really nice with our cheese mixture that's going on the inside. Profiteroles are piped out, ready to go. Let's do our gougere. Uh, I'm gonna, again, cut the tip off. I'm gonna make the tip a little smaller because our gougeres are basically gonna be like little bite size. Um, so what I'm gonna do is pipe them the same way. Again, keep it twisted, smaller, little bite size ones. You wanna give them a little space, but they don't need to be spaced out that much. So instead of squeezing really hard, twist a couple more times, and you'll see that you can squeeze super easy. Twist, squeeze, and you get a beautiful little mound of our Gougere mixture. All right, so the same setup with the water, you can do a wet finger to push down those little uh, points, but I like when I'm doing uh, massive amounts of things, you just get the towel, damp towel, tap, 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 and you get most of those little points down. And what I'm using here is a smoked sea salt from Maldon, or Maldon, Maldon. Uh, it's an English smoked sea salt. This is just gonna give them a little bit of crunch, a little bit of like pop, and offset uh, that nice cheese. So give a little pinch of this salt on top. Remember, we're serving these hot, although they're pretty good cold too. Uh, in, the, in the recipe testing for this, uh, I think I ate a thousand of these. Oh, maybe not a thousand. Maybe closer to like, you know, 40 or 50 of them. And they're absolutely delicious. Uh, great hors d'oeuvre. You pop these out of the oven for people, they're gonna be so happy. So here's my baking procedure. My oven is on at 400 degrees. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put them both into the oven um, and I'm gonna cook them for about 15 minutes and at about six or seven minutes, I'm gonna turn them so that one side doesn't just get all the heat. After about 15 minutes, I'm gonna take them and I'm gonna switch shelves, right? And I know a convection oven's blowing air around, but it still doesn't cook all that even. If you have a conventional oven, you have to do this. Change your shelves, turn your trays halfway through. So 15 minutes with one turn, and then about another 10, 15 minutes just to get these nice and crisp. So let's go into the oven. While the profiteroles and the gougere cook, I'm going to make the filling for our profiteroles. I have some cream cheese uh, that's room temperature. I'm gonna add some chopped scallions, a little bit of chopped garlic, season it up really well. The cream cheese is gonna give it a little bulk. It's also gonna make it easier to pipe into our profiteroles. And then a nice helping of black pepper. And then I'm gonna take our black label that's room temperature. And I'm just gonna break it up, oops. Rind and all, forget not eating the rind. I, when people don't eat the rind of cheeses like this, it drives me absolutely insane. There's so much flavor and complexity in that rind, right? So break it up, wipe off your hands. And now we're just gonna mush and mash. Oop. Again, make sure you get it everywhere. Mash it together. It helps if all the ingredients, again, are room temperature. And then we can put it into our piping bag. It's gonna be easier to pipe if it's room temperature. If you get this cold and you wanna get ahead on this, maybe for like you're doing the holidays or something, you could always get this into the piping bag and just bring it to room temperature before you pipe it into your profiteroles. That's one of the things I love about these is that the filling can be made ahead, the profiteroles can be made ahead. So everything can be made ahead and stored or frozen until later. The gouzeres you'll have to warm up again. The profiteroles you might have to warm up and let cool just to get them crispy. But uh, you can make this ahead. And if you're preparing for the holidays or for a special event, great items for those uh, menus. So we have our filling in the bag. Uh, I'm gonna put this aside uh, until we're ready to stuff. I'm gonna go check the oven and see how we're doing. And then we'll fill them up. All right, the profiteroles are out. Look, they're moving around. They're not stuck. That's a good thing. It's not stuck is always good. They're beautiful, light, puffy, 
We got a nice rise out of them. I'm gonna let them cool before I stuff them with the cheese. Then we can plate up and then it's time to taste. So the savory profiteroles are cooled off. I've cut a nice size hole uh, in my pastry bag. There's two ways you can do this. You can take this paring knife, make an X in the bottom and kind of jam that pastry bag in there. Give it a squeeze and you're filled. You can also make like an incision on the side, open it up like it's Pac-Man and stuff it. Uh, I like the bottom method a little better, so we'll just make like nice little X's and we'll stuff these until we run out of filling. So twist, keep some tension on that bag with a twist, give it a poke, fill it up. That one's filled, that one's not. All right, it's my favorite time, time to taste. Let's go with the Gougier first. Like light, fluffy, and airy. These things are like, like little pockets of air. Uh, it's got a little of that salt on top. I'm gonna tear it open for you so you can see. Look at how nice and fluffy it is on the inside. You can see some of our Kemba's little black label in there. Let's give it a taste. Mm. Light, airy, some of that blue cheese bite, a little salty from our smoked sea salt. Excellent, you can eat like a dozen of these. Okay, let's take a look at our savory profiteroles. Again, we stuffed these with that black label. Let's break her open. Look at that nice creamy filling. I'm only gonna eat half because uh, I'll probably eat the other half. Who am I kidding? <laughs> mm. Oh man, you get the blue cheese, you get the uh, scallions and the garlic. Oh. Either way, these are both great appetizers or d'oeuvres. Um, for your holiday parties, for your cocktail parties. People will be super impressed if you pull these out. Either way, both of them are delicious. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give us a thumbs up, like, and subscribe. Tell your family, tell your friends. We have merch in the description down below. We have a PO box down there too. I wanna to thank our Patreon patrons who support. I also wanna thank Camazola Black Label for sponsoring this video. Your cheese is wonderful, I love it. Everyone go out and find some. And that's it. That is my pate choux, gougeres, and profiteroles. I'm Chef Frank, this is Proto Cooks. Have a good one.